Alright, so moving on we have Final Fantasy XII. I remember when this game was coming out. Not any commercials, but things like the demo that came with Dragon Quest VIII and a demo at a GameStop. I had tried. It wouldn't be until a few years after the game came out that I would finally get the chance to actually play it. And for the longest time, I've been very mixed on the game. There were things I liked, things I wasn't huge on, and certain aspects I really loved. Now, after playing the game about four times, two of those being within the last year, I can say I quite love this game. In fact, it's my second favorite game in the main numbered series. Which shouldn't be too surprising, I guess, since it was initially directed by Yasumi Matsuno who was behind Final Fantasy Tactics, and Hiroyuki Ito was the director of Final Fantasy IX, both of these being some of my favorite games in the series, IX in particular being my favorite numbered game. Unfortunately, Matsuno had to back down during the game's development due to health issues, and apparently Hiro Nobu. Sakaguchi, the original creator of the Final Fantasy series, was disappointed to hear this and only played the beginning moments of the game. Anyway, let's start talking about Final Fantasy XII. One of the things I loved right from the start with this game is that it takes place in Ivalice, the fictional fantasy world that the Final Fantasy Tactics games take place in. So it was really neat to see a numbered main series game take place here. Plus, we have a nice fantasy epic style backdrop. Basically, we have a war breaking out between two powerful empires. Rosaria and Arcadia. A country between the two called Dalmasca gets taken over by the Arcadians through some pretty scummy means. By following two young orphans named Vaughn and Pinello, we are set upon an adventure of taking Dalmasca back from Arcadia by restoring the princess to her rightful place, while a looming darker threat starts to emerge within Arcadia's royal ranks. Admittedly, Vaughn and Pinello lack much motivation in the story. Vaughn could have had more going for him, but he doesn't meet the person who killed his brother till a few hours before the end of the game, which makes him and Pinello feel a bit pointless to the plot compared to other characters. To be fair though, Vaughn does mature some and that's nice to see. Plus, with Vaughn and Pinello not knowing much about the outside world and its politics, these things get explained to them and thus explained to the player. The other characters, however, are vastly more interesting and have much greater stakes to the plot. They end up carrying the story, Ash trying to restore her kingdom and struggling with how to use a great power, Balthir, a mysterious sky pirate with a slightly complicated backstory and somewhat takes Vaughn under his wing, Fran, a Viera who had left her sisters and the wood, and Bosch, a hated soldier seeking redemption. Supposedly, Bosch was originally going to be the main character. Personally, I love these characters. My only complaint is that in the main story, we don't get much more personal with them. I would have liked to see more of their backstory and character interactions as we see relationships and bonds form between them, rather than such a strong focus on the whole Nethesite thing. Also, I really like Vayn Solidor as a villain. He's always plotting and cunning and ruthless kinds of ways. Unfortunately, he doesn't interact with our heroes more. Again, I just wish we had gotten some more character stuff, as I think there was a ton of potential with what we were given. In the end, it's a great adventure with war, betrayal, ancient tombs, and powerful ancient creatures with a few, but nice character moments that I highly enjoy. So, Final Fantasy XII is an RPG, but I don't quite know how to classify it beyond that. I mean, in one way, it's an open-world RPG, while also being somewhat of a turn-based game, technically, but at the same time, it kind of isn't. I've heard people say it's a bit like an MMO, I can't say so myself since I've never played an MMORPG. Like many other RPGs, you'll be traveling to different locations, visiting towns and cities, exploring dungeons, and fighting monsters. Of course, settlements often have shops to buy items, weapons, and armor. However, this game kind of harkens back to the original Final Fantasy, as now you also have to buy magic, techniques, and gambits. I'll explain gambits later. I can see how this might bother people, but I actually really like it. Makes you think about which spells are more important right now. Plus, you can find 
find a few spells and treasure chests throughout the game. There are no inns here, since save crystals fully heal your party. We have a special orange crystal that not only lets you save, but also allows you to teleport between them if you don't want to travel via the airship, which is actually more restrictive in comparison. Commercial airships can only go to cities, and your personal airship, the Straw, is still limited to certain areas that it can dock, which is a bit disappointing to me. I get why it's so limited, and at the very least, we do have a few ways to travel aside from walking. Hell, chocobos are here too if you don't want to fight monsters, or if you want to gain access to special locations. Unlike 10, dungeons, deserts, forests, and plains are much more complicated with different areas to traverse that will lead to dead ends, or being optional places to visit. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that areas aren't just straight linear paths and are, to me, much more worth exploring. And this is something I really appreciate. And hey, it's not too confusing to navigate these locations since you still do have a map that fills up as you travel. In fact, you can get maps from certain Moogles, and the only place I can think of that you don't get a map is genuinely the most complicated area to travel, so be sure to have a guide for that crystal. Heck, progressing the story is super easy too, as areas you need to go to will be marked on your map. Though, to be fair, there are dungeons with some puzzle-like elements to them that you'll have to get through, which to me is great. Okay, I should mention a few things real quick. For one, you don't get money usually from killing monsters, but you do get materials that you can sell at shops, and selling certain amounts of certain materials will open up items and equipment at the shop's bazaar. This took me way longer to realize than I'd like to admit, but it's very helpful and the best way to get gil in this game. Two, you can't equip weapons, armor, or accessories without unlocking them on a character's license board. So every character has a license board, and by earning points by killing monsters, you can unlock access to things on the license board. Not only equipment, but also spells, techniques, espers, quickenings, and things like more health or magic, or cutting down a spell time. Stuff like that. I actually you like the license board a lot as it's a nice unique way to choose the path for your characters to take. Honestly, my only issue is that everyone shares the same license board layout instead of boards being different for each individual. This means that everyone can eventually learn every spell, technique, and equip every kind of armor and weapon. Again, I would personally prefer it if each character played a different role. But to be fair, you are in control on how your character grows, so you don't have to make everyone learn everything. So there is a lot of customization for players, which is very respectable. So random encounters aren't really a thing. Monsters are just there in the world, and if they're aggressive, they'll come after you, or you can go after them. And yes, there are some monsters that are more docile, and others that will kill each other to make themselves more powerful. There is this ATB system where you have to wait for characters to perform actions, and you can pull up a menu to tell characters what to attack or which spells they should use on which enemies. Now, you only move one character at a time, as the other characters move on their own, and pulling up a menu all the time would be very tedious, which is why we have the Gambit system. So, Gambits are basically your way of controlling your party's AI. Here's a few examples. You can make it where a character's will only attack when the leader, your current character, attacks an enemy, heal with Kira when characters are below a certain percentage of health, and have spellcasters use Fura on flans weak to fire. It's surprisingly not that complicated of a system to understand, and having simple setups will get you through most of the main story. Whoever you have as your main support, you're definitely gonna appreciate the spell to spell, as you're gonna want that for certain boss fights. Aside Aside from attacks, spells, and techniques, characters can also perform limit break-like moves called quickenings, which will use up all of your MP, so don't abuse these. And to be fair, each of these quickenings is unique to each character, which is really nice. You will also earn espers, who are summons, and they're kind of like the summons in Final Fantasy X, as they accompany the summoner and will eventually use a super powerful move. It's really neat. A few small things that I really love about this game would be the Sky Pirate's Den, which will reward you with these special little sprites after reaching certain milestones. 
They're kind of like trophies or achievements, except these are actually cool and more fun to me. Then we have the bestiary, which not only gives you info on monsters, but if you kill enough of a certain monster, you also get lore info on the world. Sweet! Unfortunately, there isn't much in terms of minigames this time. We have a very meh fishing minigame and a boring foot race thing. It's a shame because chocobo racing would have been really fun in this game with how nicely they control. Instead though, we have many, and I mean a ton of side quests. Some are very minor, like helping Aviera find love. Others are a bit more important, like trying to reunite a cactoid family or help finding all these missing cockatrices. But the big ones are optional boss fights, the optional espers, and hunts. Hunts are these special quests that you can accept at pubs where locals will need you to hunt down a special monster. Personally, I really, really love hunts. They are a fun side quest that are rewarding and help expand on some of the areas in lore. The Esper and Special Hunts will really test you as you need to go in with proper strategies and equipment, so you best know your gambits because they are going to be very challenging. Keep in mind, a fair amount of these side quests are intertwined with each other, so you can't even properly start some without first completing others. So even if we don't have any sports or card games this time around, there's still plenty to do outside the main story, and a lot of it is entertaining, which to me is fantastic. Much like previous Evilisian games, I absolutely love the art style here. Such rich detail in characters, the architecture of cities and designs of ships, fantastic looking creatures, and immersive environments. For the PlayStation 2, this game still impresses me with how amazing the character models look. Animations aren't too over the top this time, but still look great with some nice particle effects for spells. So many cool locations to visit as well, like the grand city of Rabanasta, a city in the sky Bujerba, dark winding mines, lush grand forests like the Feywood and the Selica Wood, grassy plains like Osmone, and great mountains like Bromises. Of course, this game has amazing music. If you're familiar with previous games that took place in Ivelisse, then you'll recognize themes like the royal city of Rabanasta, the Dalmasca Estersand, and clan headquarters. Then we have some nice pieces of music from other Final Fantasy games like Loop Demo and Victory fanfare, and so many more great pieces of music like Rabanasa Downtown, Theme of the Empire, and Desperate Fight. Final Fantasy XII has my favorite soundtrack of all time for the PlayStation 2, so I highly recommend giving it a listening. Ultimately, I love Final Fantasy XII. It has a fun and interesting battle system, grand adventure of a story with likable and at times compelling characters, fantastic soundtrack, and it does an amazing job at pulling you into the world of Ivelisse. Sure, some side quests can get annoying and take forever, but that doesn't bother me too much. Like I said, this has become my second favorite numbered game, right under 9 for me. And of course, this is on my personal list of absolute best must-play RPGs for the PlayStation 2. However, I kind of would recommend you play the Zodiac Age version more. First off, I have been dying for this to finally come to the States, as it's actually an HD port of the International Zodiac Job System version of the game that was on the PlayStation 2 but only in Japan. Not only is there now a job system that is really neat, which helps diversify the characters more, but there are a few new weapons and you can no longer mess up at getting the Zodiac Spear. A map overlay, you can control and play as the espers when summoned, quickenings have a separate gauge as to not consume all your MP, an autosave feature which helps make a few optional boss fights much less aggravating, a trial mode with great prizes and a new boss fight, and best of all, a fast forward feature which makes grinding or long traveling sections much less annoying. The Switch and Xbox versions also get a better new game plus mode and the ability to change jobs. Can we uh, get these for the PS4 version soon? This is such a great game, and for me, it's the last Final Fantasy game I've liked or cared about. I don't play MMOs, so I don't care for 14, and I just haven't liked what's happened to the series since. Not to say Square Enix is all bad. Dragon Quest is still amazing, and hey, we finally got Seiken Densetsu 3 in the West, which is freaking awesome. Anyway, 
Next video will be on another PlayStation 2 game that I find to be very special, and at the end of that video, there will also be a very special announcement for the channel, so I'll see you all then.